it, it's a verb phrase. It tells us to switch off. And we have a lot of verb phrases. We do a lot of verb phrases in English. Um, here's just a list of them. Just some of them. And um, for example, um, cut and down. Well, cut, you know, is, you know what that means. And down, but when we say cut down, we're referring to you cut down a tree. Um, you know, you, you, when, when you have a tree and you want to chop it down, you say, well, I'm going to cut down the tree. Okay? We've taken two words, put them together to create a verb phrase that has a special meaning of its own. We turn on the lights. We throw out the trash. We put back the markers where they belong. Um, we look up something on Google. Um, or we look up a word in the dictionary. Uh, we fill in information on a form. You know, when you apply for something, you know, you, you, you go to the bank to apply for a loan, or you go to the government to apply for a permit, you fill in the form, the information in the form. You give back. Give back becomes give back. Um, I will give back your snacks. <laughs> Not, no, I'm going to eat them. Um, we tear up the paper. Um, yeah. Yeah, tear it up. Uh huh. Um, we hand in um, homework. If 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 I if I gave you as a class homework that you had to take home and, and do like you did when you were younger in school, and then the next day the teacher would say, "Hand in your homework," which is the same as turn it back. Turn it back. Uh huh. Um, you take your, your, your car to the, to the uh, filling station. Is that what you call them in Thailand? Filling stations? Gas stations? Yes. Yeah. You, fill, you uh, fill it up. You fill up the tank. Fill up the, fill up the oil. Yeah. Hmm? Fill up the oil. Yeah. Fill it up. Uh, cross out. I'm writing on the board. I write a word. And I think, oh no, I don't want to use that word. I'll just cross it out. So. Hand out. Hand out. Hand out. Hand out. Um, a handout is, we've taken the verb hand. You know, I hand you something and you know what the preposition out means. But a handout is, when I gave you, um, when I gave you the story, The Good Earth, you know, the, the, the copy of the first chapter, Good Earth, that was a handout. You have a handout. It's something that I handed out to you and you, you kept. So a handout is uh, usually a, a piece of paper that you've been given and that you'll use. That's a handout. Shut off is going to be very similar to turn off. So uh, you're driving your car and you, you arrive at, at your destination and you shut off the engine or you turn off the engine. Same thing. You would normally say turn off the lights. You would normally say shut off the engine. But they're, they're interchangeable. They're interchangeable. 
Um, Levon. Uh, when I when I uh, leave class, if if when when we're finished, there was going to be another class here, and I started to turn off the lights, and the next teacher could say, "Oh, leave on the lights, leave on the lights," which means don't turn them off. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, find out. Um, uh, I really don't know where we're going to go this afternoon. You know, on our on our tour with with Maha Serpet, but I'll find out. You know, I'll just go and I'll find out. I'll learn. When I say find out, it means that I'll learn eventually. Um, it will it will uh, reveal itself to me. I'll find it out. Um, any others here that 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 uh, would don't seem to make sense to you? Uh huh. Find out and what which one? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Discover. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll find out. I'll discover. Very same. Uh -huh. Good. Good example. Uh huh. Very good. These are verb phrases, and um, they started off uh, long. I mean, you know, I mean, a language in in any culture, whether it's Thai, whether it's Mandarin, whether it's Spanish, whether it's German, any language, is is constantly changing. It it evolves. The way the way uh, people spoke in Thailand a hundred years ago is different than the way they speak today. And you can look at, at things that were written 100 years ago as evidence of that. And it's, it's true of every language. So what we now call very ordinary verb phrases, those started off as idioms. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, as slang. But then it got used so much, they became so common that they became ordinary verbs. We call them verb phrases because it's actually two words, uh, but they're two words that are used as one concept, as one, one, one meaning, verb phrase. Sometimes, sometimes, not always, you will see words like this that will have hyphens. Yeah, you know, to show that, that, that a hyphen is a punctuation mark that just connects two words. And, and when you see that, it, it's just a, a clue to the reader that these two words go together. So probably long ago, these verb phrases had hyphens. But they're used so much, they're so common in the language now that no one bothers to put the hyphen in. Because we all know that when you see give back, it means to give something back to someone. Or that to clean up, it means to, you know, clean up your, your mess. Okay, verb phrases. You'll run across them a lot in, in, in reading, especially when you're reading uh, like magazines and newspapers, informal things. And we use them a lot in, um, in just ordinary conversation. So, any questions on verb phrases? Uh, the best way to, to, to get comfortable with them is just, again, with practice. You know, we'll use them. Uh -huh. We'll use them. So, well, we have some time left. Shall we uh, return to uh, the good earth? You want, to, you want to return to the good earth? Read another couple of paragraphs? Okay, let's do that. 
Um, Nat, I need to get into my bag here. You're okay, I think. Yeah. That's not the one I want. Uh, I don't know what happened. Yeah, I guess that's it. Okay. I must be, uh, I lost my other one. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay. And I think when we stopped, When we stopped, we were at the bottom of page eight. We're just going to do a couple of paragraphs here, and then I want to ask ask your opinion about something. So we're at the, we're at the bottom. We're at the bottom of page eight, where it says Wang Lung knew his father spoke well. Now remember, let's review where we were. Wang Lung, poor farmer, he's getting married. Uh, he's going to be married to uh, a woman who is a slave in a, a very rich house. And, and these customs are very um, different for us because this is taking place a hundred years ago uh, in, in the interior of China. Uh, and this would be before the revolution. Uh, a lot of poverty, a lot of, uh, a lot of poor people. So um, 